Hello everyone, welcome back to um, my demo of high availability. In this video, um, I'm actually going to do the wiring for the FortiGates. Now normally, we do not need a power down switches or FortiGates to plug in cables, all right? This is simply a limitation of my simulator here, my little emulating platform. Um, so I'm gonna do this particular part in a separate video. Um, because I'm going to do the wiring, then I'm going to power everything back up like normal. Now, once again, in the real world, we would not need to power down our devices to plug in devices to each other. That'd be horrible. Anyways, um, but real quickly, let's see where we are so far. All right, so we have the second FortiGate using different IP addresses to access WAN 1, and also different IP addresses to access LAN interface all right but if you notice port 6 of my FortiGate that's in production is also plugged into the same switch as port 6 on the FortiGate that's going to become my secondary all right also for the port 4 so port 4 is where my WAN 1 lives on my main FortiGate and also port 4 is plugged into the same switch from my WAN 1 so um yeah, so it's mirroring, and that's that's one of the keys that we have to take into play here. And that is the FortiGates that you're clustering have to be plugged into the same ports, into the same broadcast domains as uh, the other FortiGates. That way, if this one fails, all right, it is in the same switch that uh, the FortiGate was originally in. Now, not to go too, too deep into details, uh, there is a FortiGate um, Part 2 class that we do. And instead of virtual IP addresses, it actually does a virtual MAC address. So when there's a failover, the FortiGate will actually send, the one that's been elected now as the primary, a gratuitous ARP to the switch saying, hey, that MAC address now lives on your 03 interface instead of your zero one interface and it changes the mac table all right um, so instead of using virtual ip addresses it's using virtual mac addresses that way there is no arping that has to go across the field to try to get new mapped ip addresses to new uh, mac addresses so on and so forth all right but uh bottom line is that they have to be plugged into the same broadcast domain so let's go ahead and finish this all right so uh, my main fortigate has port 5 plugged into wan 2 so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to plug in a cable from my port 5 to the wan 2 switch all right and i know that this is physically going to look horrible here <laughs> after we have all of the snaked together. So, um, and also though, is the heartbeat links. Now, depending on your version of FortiGate, you might actually have interfaces that say heartbeat uh, on the back of your FortiGate. And these are gonna be ports that are dedicated to clustering. Now, if you don't, or if you're in a virtual environment, we actually tell the FortiGate which ones to use. Now, Fortinet uh, requires one, obviously, and the heartbeat links is what's gonna do the clustering passes along the synchronization information, does the election, so on and so forth. Um, they do recommend two of them, all right, for redundancy purposes. So I'm gonna take my tool here and I'm gonna plug in port one to port one and I'm gonna configure these as my first heartbeat link. All right. And then also, nope, come on buddy, you can do it. Also, I'm going to do port two to port two. All right. Now, other than just configuring the heartbeat links, there is no other configuration that you have to do. It's going to use something called the PIPA or automatic IP addressing to assign IP addresses on those heartbeat links. And so we don't really do anything other than point to them and let the clustering protocol do the rest. All right. So once again, we have port six, port six plugged into the same LAN switch. We have port four and port four plugged into the same WAN one switch. And we have port five and port five plugged into the same WAN two. All right. Um, 
I'm going to do one other thing here, and I'm going to want to make sure that I can administer the FortiGates individually after they're clustered. So if the primary information gets synced completely with the secondary information and all their interfaces IP addresses, how can we actually point to a management ports or management IP address after that synchronization? Well, in short, you cannot. So there's a couple of tricks that you can do there, like um, execute HA manage through the CLI to maybe get a to get a CLI uh, command prompt on the second FortiGate, but I actually want to be able to, to access my secondary FortiGate um, remotely or, or through the GUI by itself, all right? So um, I am going to plug a second cable here. All right, a port 10, which is not being used. And also, on my other FortiGate, I'm going to plug in a port 10. All right. So what I'm going to do is when I'm configuring my, my HA cluster is that I'm going to reserve port 10 for management. Now, why is that important? Well, all the other interfaces are going to sync, okay, except for that port 10. And that way I can put in my own IP address to individually administer to to each one of these FortiGates. So once again, guys, same broadcast domain, one, preferably two heartbeat links wired together directly. And then also I have port six and port 10 as my management. So port six is my LAN, port 10 is a management interface. All right, um, so I'm gonna stop the video there. That is the physical wiring. I'm gonna boot everything back up and then we're going to go ahead and set the HA cluster. So I will be back.